Hiya folks, I'm back in my workshop now with my brand new Vivo 5 kilowatt diesel heater that I was gonna mount outside. You said put it inside because you can recirculate the actual air that's inside and that'll warm up quicker. Let me go through the installation, what I've actually done. So let's take a look and see how I finally installed it. Right folks, so this is the installation I've gone for. I've chose to put it in this corner out the way and a lot of you did suggest uh, running it on a power supply. I've actually bought one here and I got this one from Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description below the video for this actual one. It's a 15 amp regulated power supply. I think on full tilt when they start up, these things take about seven to eight amps and then they drop right back down. So that's well big enough to use that. I've uh, mounted it on a couple of L brackets there, as you can see, and a wooden shelf to which I've cut out a large oval shape and I've also added this wrap exhaust wrap there to the exhaust pipe because that actually does get very very hot I fitted the silencer that comes with it inside and then this bit going to the outside wall this is only a one layer log cabin I, I'm in here so I've actually cut a larger hole and then put that metal plate over it so there's no contact with the uh, the hot exhaust with the uh, the wooden surround sort of thing. So that's just a 22 mil copper pipe, plumbing pipe, which I, I've actually stuck into the end of this exhaust. I actually slit the exhaust on the, on the collar, put a few slits in it and then tightened it up with a Jubilee clip and that made a, 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 a nice tight seal. So that's how I've actually got over that. This comes with an L bracket for this support. So I've actually supported that pipe on the wall there. Now this is the original pipe a lot of people change this pipe but I've, i'm using it just to see how it lasts anyway it's situated inside so if this does deteriorate all i've got to do is unhook it from there and then poke it through the wall to where i've actually fitted the fuel tank which i'll show you in a second this is the air intake which just sits literally there with its own little baffle filter on it there and also this is where the air comes in for it to go through and blow out again so it's sucking in the air actually inside the uh log cabin rather than suck it in from outside if I would have mounted this outside. The bracket on the top there has been bolted down so that is nice and solid. The shelf has been bolted down and as I said I've put this metal plate behind just as a, a fire guard so to speak. Not that this gets hot anyway so uh, that's that. I've chose to just have these sitting like this which uh, it, it suits my purpose otherwise you have to run extra ducting. This ducting here actually all come with the unit as well. And all that is is a straight piece going to a T piece which come with the unit. And then the other length of this I cut in half and I've just put them down and like that so that you can actually turn them and face them in different directions. And to hold that in place like that, I've just used cable ties. And all I've basically done was in behind there, I've knocked one of these cable tie clips in and then just poked a cable tie through there and then wrapped it literally around the pipe like that. And I've done that there. And I've also done it there as well. You probably can't see that, just to hold that one in place. So I'm gonna put another one up there as well. It's just that I haven't got around to doing that yet. So that's the setup there. All the wiring and plumbing is just plug and play literally. There's the main connector. This is the main wiring room. I'm gonna put some of this um, cable protection stuff around that just for the, that's the battery charge, the cable there. So that just goes onto there, positive and negative. And the rest of the looms come round the back there. One of the cables comes down and through the back to where I've actually situated the fuel tank, which we'll look at in a minute. And the second one comes along and I had this bit of trunking down the wall and I've just made it pop out there. And that's where I put the actual controller. That's the little plastic screen on the front of that controller. I've just left that on there for the moment, folks. So that's that. So the fuel pipe, as I said, comes down and is well away from the, the exhaust there and as I say that does protect the heat in case of any scalding or burning so both cables have gone through the wall for the fuel pump and coming literally around the other side of that wall there which is a double layer you can see there where I've situated the fuel tank uh, the fuel outlet comes at the bottom on this one and the pipe just runs up the side there and a lot of you did point out when I showed this in the previous video of the uh, test rig up I'd done, I did put that after the fuel pump, but that was only a test run. It was always gonna go before the fuel pump to protect the fuel pump. So as you can see, that is now in situ. The pump has to be slightly pointing uphill, which it does there, as you can see, and then out of there, and that comes through the wall and then goes to the actual unit itself. 
The cable coming through there that feeds the pump obviously just plugs on the top there. And that is the installation basically. And all I have to do is undo the cap. Don't forget the cap's got a little hole in it as well, folks. Always keep that clean and make sure it's there. Otherwise, as, as the uh, diesel gets drawn out of there, you need to suck air into there. So keep that hole clear on there. And that's basically the installation. So let's do no more than to fire it up. I'm going to switch the power supply on. Now, one thing to note as well is that when you um, power these units down, you don't just turn the power supply off because it has to cool things down. There's a hot aluminium heat sink in there, which obviously heats up. And if you just turn it off and let it cool down naturally without the fan blowing through, it could overheat the electronics in there as well. So I'm just saying that, uh, so it's better to be safe than sorry. It takes about three or four minutes after you've powered down from either the control panel there or the remote, and it still runs the fan until this blows out a bit, the air's a bit cool, which means that then it's uh, done its job. So there you go. So let's just turn this on now. So I'm gonna turn the power supply on. Now my little power supply here has also got a little fan in it. So you will hear the whirring noise of a fan there as well as it's running. And as you can see, the unit is actually off at the moment. Uh, before I filled this in, once I plumb this in, for example, what you have to do is to prime the pump and to prime the pump on this type of um, the unit I've got here, which is the five kilowatt Vivor one, this control panel or this type of control panel, you have to hold down the up and down buttons and press them in continuously and hold them in and basically wait until you see the fuel come up here and then start to enter the unit and that's it. And then you can let them go and then you can fire the unit up. So that's how you prime the pump on this sort of system. So I'm gonna turn it on now just by pressing the power button. You can see the unit lights up. The fan kicks in. And now it's gonna start the glow plug there. And it will go through its proving cycle to start it up. It's on level three at the moment. The, in, the internal temperature here at the moment in this room is 12 degrees centigrade. And you literally just have to sit and wait until it does its proving cycle. So to get things moving a bit, I'm just gonna raise the power level, uh, level six on this one, so. And I can start to hear this start to ramp up now. I can hear the burner coming on, as you can see the controls are alight there now. This is an instruction, this isn't an instructional video on how this thing works. I'm just showing you the general display. So while it's ramping up, you do get a bit of noise of the, um, the, the burner, so to speak and it blows out cold air until it starts to warm up. So at the moment, this is cool, pretty cool coming out of there. So this log cabin, the one I'm standing in here, is probably about just under four meters by four meters. And then I've got this walkthrough, which is another four meters by four meters as well. So um, I can feel this now coming out nice and warm now. And although it, it gives off quite a bit of noise, but don't forget we've got it ramped up full at the moment. So. Um, you can ramp it down and a lot of people do run, they run these when they've got their camper vans or whatever they ramp them right the way down and they say that uh, it's plenty of sufficient heat for like a, a camping van or whatever or a day van or caravan or whatever but people do use these in workshops so i'll see how long it takes to warm up here as i say we're on full pelt at the moment and uh, i'll come back to you in a minute so i've just come around the back here folks just so you can see the uh, pump set up there and you can just hear it ticking away there. But if you've got that under a, uh, in a box or whatever, I could enclose that, but I'm really not too bothered about that noise. I can't really hear it when I'm inside. And as you can see, that's the little fuel set up there and it works a treat. So I've just pulled that sheet down, which uh, is between the two log cabins. And already I can feel the difference within this log cabin. And that really does push out some nice hot air. If I can get my temperature probe right there. Right, I've got my laser temperature probe. Just show you the temperature coming out of these plastic vents here. There you go, Look, that's on the plastic vent there. Can you see that? 62 odd degrees. The plastic body of the unit, look, if you're worried about the heat of that, look, is only about 25 odd so degrees, so they don't really get hot at all. So my, my concern was that this might radiate heat, but as you can see, that metal plate at the back there is gonna protect that woodwork. The exhaust with the wrap on, as you can see, look, that does get very hot. And that's why I put the wrap on it as well, just to keep it protected. That's 200 odd degrees there, look. 
there we go look that's up to 23 degrees just around the edge of that plate there look so there's no fear of any combustion in there as, as well so I'm happy with that so that's the little setup folks there you go and it's actually noticeably warm in here already can you feel the difference yeah you feel the difference in temperature already yeah that's going up so let's just see in the next 10 minutes how that goes up folks you're up to 15 degrees at the moment right folks it's about nine minutes later now and i say although air will be creeping through to there we're let's have a look at our temperature probe now to give the statement workshop folks and already can you see that a little bit of light there you go that look already we're up to 20 degrees c at where i, I normally work at the workbench area so going over there that's where the unit is over in the corner there so i could actually ramp that down now so i'll go over to the controller and actually lower take it down to say three and then you will hear this slot slowly start to ramp down as i can do now and obviously when you ramp it down you're using less fuel as well so once you reach temperature get that initial warm air into the place and then you can uh, actually lower it and let it tick over but as i say this round here through there is a totally different area and they'll probably get in a lot of uh, heat loss going through there so that's it folks and one thing to remember as well is that i'm probably going to put a carbon monoxide sensor probably around this area somewhere just to find out if we have got any carbon monoxide in this area which I shouldn't think we should have because everything's tight and it's basically vented to the outside so there's no reason for any uh, exhaust fumes to be in here and if you did have exhaust fumes in here actual exhaust fumes you would probably smell them anyway and to power the unit off what you don't do is just to turn the supply to the unit off and cut everything off what you have to do is to turn it off via the power button there or they also give you this handy little remote control which I can turn on or off or raise and lower the temperature let's say if I'm over at my workbench for example and all you do there would basically turn it off there we go and it's just turned off there now if you probably see that it says off and then what will happen now for the next few minutes probably five minutes yeah, it's starting to ramp down so the power ramps down and then you'll see that the little fan symbol on it is still running and you don't physically turn the power off until you see that fan unit go off and this word off disappears as well folks then you can turn your power supply off over there so that is my installation that's the way i've done it in in my workshop so um you can go with a battery i did opt against the battery because uh, obviously a big battery Although you can put a trickle charger on it and keep it battery uh, topped up that way, I just found it so much easier and convenient to use that type of um, 12 volt supply. You can get them a lot cheaper. I think this one was about 55 pounds, something like that. You can get them around a 20 pound mark. They're not uh, quite the same design as that. Uh, that's more of a bench top one. The other ones are more what you put inside a, a piece of equipment or whatever, where you've got different types of terminal connections. But uh, they are on uh, Amazon, for example, but I'll leave the links to that one below. And yeah, I'm, I'm well pleased with it this has really warmed up this area and this is always the problem I had in here was having an open flame fire which I did do with my color gas heater so what else I bought folks is one of the ones with the built-in tank again that's another five kilowatt one where you could, it's in a way it's sort of portable so I will be bringing that one to you in the next video and that's to say that's got the built-in fuel tank all and complete in one unit so stick around for that one we'll see you in the next video i hope you've enjoyed this and uh, we'll see you in the next video and until then bye for now